everyone, and welcome to another edition of Inside Guns with your host, me, the Yankee Marshall. Today, I want to talk about the upcoming decision from the Supreme Court on the New York State Rifle and Pistol Association versus Bruin case. A lot of people have been sending me emails saying, what do you think is going to happen? What do you think the Supreme Court's going to say? What do you think they're going to do? Well, I can't predict what the Supreme Court's going to do. Most of them, in fact, I'd say none of them are as pro 2A as I am, and a lot of you are. We're not going to see them go as far as we would go, probably. Remember, even Scalia, who was the darling of the right wing, was like, oh, well, we have to have some gun laws and some restrictions on guns, you know, during the Heller decision. So they're not really on our side. Uh, even Amy Coney Barrett just recently said, well, we can't trust people to carry guns into Times Square or the subway, which makes a lot of sense since someone just went into the subway and shot a bunch of people, which shows that even if you tell people you can't carry guns in the subway, that crazily, crazy people don't listen and they do it anyway. So I don't think the ruling is going to be as broad as someone like myself or some of you out there would like to see, but I do think it's going to go our way. In fact, I think everyone right now thinks it's going to go our way, especially the anti-gun groups. They are panicking. Basically, they're writing all these stories about how bad is it going to be after the decision? How are we going to fight back after the decision? Blah, blah, blah. More guns are going to come onto the streets of California. All these kind of articles. So obviously they think it's going to go against them. And I do agree, I think it's going to go against them also. But there is a long list of things that could happen. You know, there's different scenarios that can come down with this. You know, now, in the past, there's been some uh, SCOTUS rulings on the Second Amendment recently, in the recent past. Uh, we had Heller, which is probably the most uh, uh, important one. That was in D.C., and that Basically, the gist of it was saying that BC, uh, D.C. couldn't stop people from having guns, period, because you couldn't even own them in your house, because owning a gun is an individual right, and using it for self-defense is a right. So you can't deny people to own them in their own home like D.C. was doing, because it is an individual right, the Second Amendment, and self-defense is also a right. So if you have a gun and you have a right to defend yourself, uh, then you have a right to obviously use that gun to defend yourself. That was basically Heller. And then we got McDonald in Chicago. And that case was basically, Heller applied to the federal government, saying the federal government can't step on your gun rights because that's what was happening in D.C. It was, you know, federal government stepping on your gun rights. In the Chicago case, uh, the McDonald case, they basically said that states and counties and towns also had to respect the Second Amendment. So therefore, any gun law they had that was unconstitutional was stricken down because they have to follow the Constitution just like the federal government does, which I don't know why we needed a Supreme Court case to say that, but apparently they did. So that basically said, now, uh, with those two decisions, owning a gun is an individual right guaranteed by the Constitution. Self-defense is a right. So if you have, a, like I said, a right to have a gun and a right to self-defense, you can obviously use that gun for self-defense. And not only does that apply to the federal government, but to the state, county, city, etc. So they cannot deny you your ability to own a gun and to use that gun for self-defense. So now we get to the new case, the New York case, and it's basically saying, well, the state is denying people their right to self-defense because they can't take their guns out of their home with them. And if you have a right to self-defense, well, then you have a right to self-defense everywhere. If you have a right to own a gun, then you should be able to have a right to use that gun for self-defense everywhere. And the state says, nope, if you want to carry a gun in our state, you got to get a carry permit. And it's a May issue state, so we require you to have proper cause to have a gun. And I live in a really bad neighborhood, and I need to defend myself. They say, nope, that's not cause. And even Brett Kavanaugh questioned that. Why isn't that cause in the original hearing for this case? So what they're wanting to do is strike that down to where New York has to be shall issue. You have to let people have a permit if they want one. You have to let them have their right to own a gun and defend themselves with it, even outside their home. We're basically breaking down that uh, between home and public barrier right here. Now, the court was iffy on some aspects of it. Like I said, even Amy Coney Barrett was like, well, we got to say there's some places they can't carry. And if we say that everybody can carry everywhere, does that mean they can carry everywhere and blah, blah, blah. Uh, and uh, what's her name? Uh, oh, God, I can't remember her name. I want to say Skagen. 
But at any rate, uh, she based one of the liberal justice. She said, well, yeah, if we do this, everybody will just be carried everywhere. It's willy nilly. But uh, Kavanaugh, I do believe, was the one that cleared it up and says, well, we're not ruling on whether people can carry everywhere. Uh, that would apply to public places, but we're not even ruling on does it apply to everywhere. We're just saying, does the state have the ability to prevent people from having their gun and taking it with them when they go somewhere for self-defense? So they really kind of narrowed it down. But here's the way I see it going. Like I said, there's multiple different scenarios here. They're either going to just strike down that law. They're going to say the New York law goes too far. And that's going to benefit the people of New York. Because now the uh, New York will have to start issuing carry permits, which they very, weren't issuing very many before. In fact, a lot of the liberal, couple of the liberal justices, the way they tried to kick this out so they didn't have to deal with it is they said, well, we need more cases from the lower courts to see whether they're actually denying people the right or not. Well, we know they're denying people the right. You see all the time how many people they're denying. They issue very few. So that was just a try to get out of it thing. But didn't work. The other justices didn't go for that because they know that they already know the New York what New York is doing. This little scheme they got. So uh, they could do that. They could just say this is too severe and New York has to scrap it and that'll benefit all the people in New York. Now they could go further uh, and they could say carrying a gun is a right, having a gun in your home for self-defense is a right, and having a gun outside your home for self-defense is a right. That would really tick off the leftists because that would mean any place that required you to do much of anything to be able to carry a gun outside your home is going to end up getting struck down. Because if you have a right to carry outside, well, then you've got a right to carry. And the government can't stop that. Not with excessive fees, not with testing requirements, not with anything. All those things would eventually begin to fall. So those are the two extremes right there. You could have one where they just strike down that law and it benefits just the state. And the other extreme is they could just say, yeah, everyone's got a right to own a gun in their home, outside their home for self-defense and the state, the federal, the county, whatever, can't say anything about it or do anything to stop them. And that would be the other extreme. And that would mean, oh, well, everybody has a right to carry every, you know, every day outside their home. There would still be the case to deal with a restricted area like private property, which I agree private property should be able to restrict things. It's private property. I should be able to tell you, you can't carry a gun on my property because it's my property. I can't tell you, you can't carry a gun to the grocery store though. That's not my property. So uh, that would be, like I said, the other extreme, that would just open it up and anything that was a restriction on that right, like I said, excessive fees, testing requirements, all these other things would eventually fall and the whole anti-gun uh, crusade would be pretty much done for. You know, not completely done for because, you know, everybody thought abortion was settled and that's still up in the air. It'd still be a political football, trust me. But it would uh, go a long ways to restoring everybody's Second Amendment rights. Now, what's probably going to happen is something that's in the middle of these two things. It's not the lesser one or the perfect one, in my opinion. It's they're going to say that states don't have a right to deny someone a carry permit as long as they pass the normal background checks. Based on what they were saying, that was kind of like the way they were leaning. That if you can pass a background check to buy a gun, well, then you can pass the background check to carry that gun. So they have to issue the permit if you can pass the background check. So every state would just be shall issue that would include California. That would include a lot of states. Because if they decide that a state can't restrict your right, well, that'll apply to all states. If they don't deal just with this statute, they, that would apply to California, Maryland, wherever. Chicago, wherever. Everybody who applied for a permit, who was a legal law-abiding citizen, who wasn't prevented from owning a gun, which is something we need to get rid of later, uh, would be allowed to get a permit. They'd be, have to be issued. Now, if that happened, probably a lot of states would just go to open, you know, a constitutional carry because what's the point of having this big expense if you can't really charge a lot of money for it and, you know, everybody gets to get one. If you own a gun, you, what's the point? Why bother? If they could buy a gun, they can carry the gun. So let's just do constitutional carry. You'd see a lot more of that, but some states like California would still go through the process and, and they would try to slow it down and blah, blah, blah. And there'll probably be more cases of like, oh, California's taken six months to do permits, you know, something like that. But it would be a big step. Wouldn't be as big a step as what I said would be the other 
uh, ex the, the furthest extreme that I agree with, but it would be better than the one that just affected New York because if it, we got it to where you can carry in all 50 states, all 50 states are shall issue, well, there'll be no one denied a carry permit who wants one. Now I said there will be other battles down the road, like how much can you charge and blah, 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 and what restri restrictions can you put on it? Because people would then, but then they, people would have a good basis there because if, you know, if they said everyone who wants to carry one who's not pre prevented from uh, owning a gun should be able to get a carry permit, well then it'd be really hard to put barriers in the way that would withstand court scrutiny for very long. So even though I don't think it's going to go as far as it could go, I think it's going to go pretty far and I think it's going to mean a lot for gun rights. So I am joining everyone here waiting with bated breath. Uh, actually, that's coffee breath, so I wouldn't get too close. But I am waiting like everyone else to hear what they're going to do. But based on what I saw them saying during the trial and during the hearings, uh, they're definitely going to rule in favor of guns. I don't think it's going to be as extreme as I would like, but I think it's going to be bad enough that the people in California, all the Giffords and the Bloombergs are going to shit their pants a little. All right, with that being said, I am done for today. Thanks everyone for coming. I do appreciate you showing up and I hope you come back again tomorrow. Until then, I just want to remind everyone to always carry. And let's hope that soon everyone gets to always carry that can legally do so. Uh, and I think everyone should be allowed to legally do so if you're not in prison. So let's remember, like I said, always carry and stay safe until I see you again.